Madeline Gambino, the host of It's Useful to Know. Today, we'll be speaking with Dr. Jenny wiley Legat. Dr. Legat, welcome to It's Useful to Know. Thank you for having me. So let's dive right in. What's one thing from your field you think it would be useful for people to know? Sure. So I'm currently uh, branching out into some new research that deals with um, how gender operates in people's use of firearms, particularly the practice of the concealed carry of firearms. I began by studying um, people, usually men, who carry firearms with them to worship often in Protestant churches in the United States. And these people often organize themselves into uh, security teams on behalf of the church. And they feel like they are um, called and exercising a role as sheepdogs, as protectors of their community. And so this project was uh, going to, to be my project on men and firearms. But alongside doing that research, I also discovered another group of people um, engaging in this practice of concealed carry, and these are women. So women, I'm discovering, have a very different way of interacting with firearms than men do. You know, they're newer to the to the gun scene. There aren't, there isn't as much um, tradition telling them what to do, how to carry guns. You know, even the very embodied practice of concealing a firearm on their body under their clothes is very different for women than the, the standard way of, that men have been doing it for a while. So because, a lot of these women are um, finding this practice for the first time, starting this practice anew. And because by definition, it's concealed carry, right? So ideally, when you're walking around, you have no idea who is carrying a firearm and who's not. So these women have to be very intentional at seeking out community. It's very uh, individual, very connected to commercial culture. It's often part of your spiritual journey is buying things, you know, and, and listening to other people tell you the, the right thing to buy to help you get there on your journey. And it's a lot of uh, disciplining the body, you know, just as yoga is disciplining the body, uh, concealed carry is and learning to operate and practice with a firearm because the, the women and men I study are very um adamant that it's not just carrying the firearm that makes you safe, it's the regular practice with the firearm. Whether that's a sheepdog in a church facing a threat in the church, or whether that's a woman, you know, driving her kids in a carpool, you know, they're, they're, they all want to, uh, to train the bodies to, um, to react. Great. So what I'm hearing from both of these examples is um, the importance of bodies and the way they move through the world and, um, and how understanding both the religious, um, and, and the gender, um, aspects of that inform these types of movements. Mm -hmm. I would agree to understand this story. You have to understand how religion and gender operate together in the lives of these women and in, in all people's lives. Can you tell me a little bit about who you're studying and and also what types of religious um, discourses or practices they might be drawing on? Um, just a little bit more about the community. Sure. So that's a great question. First, important to note that gun owners cross all demographics in the United States, but most of the people that I study do fall in the category of Protestant Christians in the United States, particularly evangelical and Pentecostal Christians. The sheepdogs, the church safety teams seem to be especially prevalent in um, evangelical and Pentecostal churches. A lot of times they will say, well, I'd heard 
or people ask me whether carrying guns was Christian. So I went to my Bible and I looked it up and this is what I found, you know, which I find to be a very Protestant way of, of interacting. Like I, you know, I, I can, I can discern for myself through kind of a, a, an assumption that the Bible is plain speaking and can be accessed by all believers. So I looked at my Bible and this is what I read. Do you see any other religious frameworks or discourses or practices that resonate with that? Or where do you think that type of emphasis is coming from? The Second Amendment advocates use the language of their God-given right to bear arms. So they're associating, you know, the, this right from the United States Constitution with, you know, something divinely ordained, God's will for them. And they argue that they are responsible for protecting their life and that valuing their life is valuing God's creation. So it's a mix of explicit Christian content and kind of an assumed Christian background that seems to blend seamlessly with a conservative worldview. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Legath, for joining us. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure.